Hey guys, what's going on? It's Steph here. Hope you've been well. I know I have. In this week's episode, I revisited a home uh, that I got permission to a few weeks ago, and the home was built in 1750. Last time I was there, I didn't do very well at all, at least to my standards. Everything I found was from maybe the early to mid 20th century, and as you guys know, I really like digging colonial and into the early 1800s. Well, I'm happy to say I did make out better this time, and I scored an explosive bucket lister. Not to mention, I also found a relic that closely relates to Wild Bill. I know, sounds kind of nuts, right? And quickly, before we hop in, two things. Number one, I was contending with an electric fence, and you can hear the equinox in the background going blah, 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 blah. There's not a whole lot I can do about that. I tried editing the sound as best I could, but unfortunately, we're just gonna have to live with it. I hope it's not too annoying. Number two, as you guys probably know by now, but just in case you don't, I am now a proud affiliate of Kellyco Metal Detector, so if you need anything detecting related at all, and you wanna get a good deal on it, definitely come to me. Email me at stephdiggs at gmail.com, and I can get you a deal on just about anything. All right, let's hop in. All right, out with the Equinox today. I couldn't be much closer to my car, could I? <laughs> I got a 23 to 24 signal. Really loud, but pretty tight. And it is this. Um, you know what? When I first pulled this up, I thought it was a bell. Maybe it is. It's got silver plating on it. Let's see. Is there anything inside? I don't know. I feel like it is a bell, though. Like, maybe a bicycle bell or something? I really have no idea. This place is built in, uh, I think it was around 1750. So really, anything's possible. I've barely tickled this place before. I came here one excruciatingly hot day. Only had a couple hours to swing. And uh, this was an easy target and obviously a very high conductor. So there could be some good stuff left for me here. Well, it's pretty hot again today, so... <laughs> I'm taking a break in the shade right now. I figured I'd pull out something I just found in the interest of showing you more of the stuff I dig instead of just the good stuff. This is kind of cool. It's a baby oxen shoe. It's pretty small. Hopefully my hands are providing a, a decent scale. I do have rather large hands, but hey, teeny tiny. It was under a little rock and it rang up really well, but <laughs> this might be the reason. You can probably hear my machine right there. It's going bonkers because I am contending with an electric fence. That's just how it rolls. So, I mean, I have the sensitivity turned down to like 19, but uh, I don't want to go much lower than that because last time I was here, most of the 20th century stuff was a few inches deep. So I want to get deeper than that in the hopes that I'll find some colonial stuff. Be back with you soon. <sighs> okay. I think I might have something pretty amazing here. I thought this was just a piece of scrap metal. I've been working at this for a while because it's really just dry, hard packed, really rocky. But I think I have something awesome. Do you guys recognize that? I know it's really bent up. But I am 99.9% .9 sure I'm working on ex excavating a powder flask. Holy sh... Okay, I won't swear. I don't know if those are eagle feathers or if it's just some kind of decoration. So I have no idea if this is military. This will probably date somewhere to the 1800s, maybe mid-1800s. Oh, I was literally just thinking about these the other day. No lie. So it looks like I didn't do any damage, which is good. Um, these usually come out in terrible shape, kind of like this. But I'm going to keep working on this for a little while. See if I can get more out. Um, otherwise... That is just too cool. Okay, <laughs> wow. Whew, all right, I'll let you know if I find more. All right, quick update on the powder flask. I was at that hole and circling the hole for at least a half an hour, maybe 40 minutes. And you can see on the right here, I don't have three hands, so I can't pick them up. But um, on the right side here, I did find three more pieces of it, uh, which definitely is not the entire flask, but could not find the rest. However, I am happy I saved more of it. That's just, you know, I feel that's due diligence when we're out here saving history. So you ever come across something like that, you need to try to find the rest. All right, back with you soon. Okay, it's been a while since my last target. It's the next, next interesting thing of note. I believe 
This is an escutcheon, uh, escutcheon screw. Can I talk? <laughs> Not 100% on that, though. But it looks really, really, really old, judging by the patina and how crude this is. I don't know. Huh. Oh, something old. Well, I got a 19 signal about six inches down, and I haven't gotten it out yet, but I can tell that it is a spoon. I think. I think. Huh. Well, it might take me a while to get that out, but I will let you know once it's out. Well, as you can see, it's not a spoon. It's a big old file. This one's actually in really good shape. I may have to restore that. They used files for a number of things back in the colonial era, so. Yeah, all right, well, this is the part I was looking at. That's why I thought it was a spoon. <laughs> Anywho, um, I had to turn my iron audio off because of the electric fence. It's just going nuts. So I guess I should turn it back on because every so often on the Equinox, I-19 can be ironed. So, anywho, all right, keep watching. I got a screaming 22 to 23 signal. It sounded tight like a coin, but ooh, I was wrong. Not what I was looking for, but it's what I'll get. A little toy car. Doesn't look that old. Let's see. Made in England, Matchbox. Usually there's a date on here somewhere. I don't see one. Maybe I'm just blind right now. It's very hot. I don't know. All right, into the pouch she goes. Well, this is kind of funny. So as I was digging this plug, um, the property owner's friend came over here. He walked over, he said, hey, my friend and I hit this place about 15 years ago and found a lot of interesting stuff. Um, I asked if he found any coppers, he said no. Uh, but he said, you know, a lot of stuff around here. So um, <laughs> right after he left, I popped this out of the sidewall. And it's some kind of cool buckle. It's, I had already cheated and looked at that. That's why my reaction's a little weird, sorry. Um, it says some kind of mark here. But I don't think it says sterling. It says something plate, so it's probably silver plated. You know what though? I'm gonna spray that off. That's pretty darn cool. Okay, so I sprayed that off. Nice, heavy, heavy silver plating. Um, and it says on the back here, Duro plate, <laughs> so durable plating, I guess. Um, they weren't kidding, that's in really good shape. And over here, H-I-G-K-O-K. -K. <laughs> I don't know, but this should be pretty easy for me to identify, so hopefully I'll have an ID by the time I put this video out. That's really cool. So as it turns out, the maker's mark on the back of that buckle is actually Hickok, H-I-C-K-O-K. -O -K. I thought it said H-I-G-K-O-K, -K, but no matter. Having that name, I was able to do a little research, per usual, and I came up with the following. In 1909, S. Ray Hickok bought a small silver plating business where he made some upscale buckles, garter clips, that sort of stuff. And it was named, as you may imagine, the Hickok Manufacturing Company. And the buckle I found here is commonly referred to as a beltagram. I'll throw a couple examples on the screen right now of some 1920s advertisements, and that's about when this belt buckle would have been made. It was impossible to find an exact match. However, you can see the similarities, and I'm very comfortable saying that this is about a 1920s belt buckle. Anyway, later in S. Ray Hickok's life, his sons, Raymond Jr. and Allen, took over the business and created the S. Ray Hickok Belt Award, which was presented to the top athlete of the year from 1950 all the way through 1971. This was considered about the biggest honor you could possibly receive in the wide world of sports. What's also pretty interesting is that this company manufactured some prototype seat belts, and that's kind of what became the seat belts that we use today. Pretty cool, but that's not exactly why I cut in here, because it gets much cooler. The most intriguing part of the belt buckle I have found is that Raymond Hickok 
was the great great nephew of none other than Wild Bill Hickok, famous gunslinger of the Old West. Wild Bill first gained notoriety around 1861 when he coolly shot three men who were trying to kill him. In that same year, the outbreak of the Civil War, Hickok joined the Union Army. He initially joined as a team master, was promoted to wagon master, and then, for reasons unknown, he was discharged. I have to imagine that knowing Wild Bill, there was probably some mischief involved in that. Calamity Jane was rumored to be his longtime partner. Calamity Jane, of course, is known as probably the biggest female gunslinger of the Wild West. As to be expected, Wild Bill was eventually murdered in Deadwood, South Dakota. Some of you probably are familiar with the Deadwood series on television, and that's exactly what this is about. So yet another rewarding find for me because I took a little time to do some research, and I thought I would share it with you because I found it pretty darn interesting. All right, back to the show. Well, this is pretty different. I would really love to know if anyone else out there has ever dug a gunpowder flask and a fire hydrant in the same day. Wait, what the hell is this? This is so weird. It looks like a fire hydrant. But, you know, it's probably just... Yeah. Wait a minute. What does it say here? I have no idea. I really thought that was supposed to be like some kind of toy fire hydrant, but it's probably just kind of, you know, I'm not even going to guess. I've got no idea. If I haven't figured it out, let me know. <laughs> okay, so that's all for this week. We're going to hop into the wrap up now, but before we do, as always, if you haven't already done so, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss a thing if you loved this video. On to the wrap up. Yep, it's wrap up time, but Oscar's going to join us, I guess. Ask her. Say hi to YouTube. Hi, YouTube. As you can see, he still has his bandage on. This is the one that had surgery a few weeks ago. But he's doing much better now. Just chilling out. Or baking in the sun, whatever you want to call it. And kicking for no reason. Okay. On to the wrap-up. <laughs> Alright. So. Here's a few of the things I didn't film. Uh, it's really just junk. But you guys told me that you wanted to see the trash. So here we go. I don't know what this is, some sheep brass, and it's all kind of fixed together. I don't know. This thing rang up like a half dollar. Uh, very disappointing dig. I have no idea what it is, but it was near the bicycle bell, so maybe it was a lock for that, and it's just missing the little U-shaped thing that goes on top. I don't know. Um, just some big pieces of iron, because like I was saying in the video, I had to turn my iron audio off because the machine was so chattery. I know you guys had to listen to it the whole video, and I'm so sorry for that. Um, and it made me dig a little bit more iron than I normally would have. No idea what that is. My little baby pork chop. Eh, I guess it's not that much of a baby. It's not the smallest one I've ever dug, uh, but far from the largest. I did dig a weedy that day. Let's see here. My Tonka Toys fire hydrant that went to a cool fire truck from the 1950s. Uh, maybe a little bit later. The example I showed us from the 50s, but it doesn't quite have this little fixture to it, so it might be 60s. I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine, but still kind of cool. Little toy car. This, I'm still not sure what it is. Um, I'm not convinced it's an escutcheon screw, like I was saying in the video. Really have no idea, so if you know, let me know. Uh, really nice file. I do need to restore this, but I've got something else in the tank right now that's kind of exciting. Um, and hopefully I'll show you guys in a few weeks. But yeah, very nice file. Worth restoring and displaying for sure. And I don't say that about much iron, so you know it's good. Uh, a little bicycle bell. I haven't quite figured out exactly what model this came from, but this is where that little thumb punch would have gone, where you can go cha-ching, cha-ching. So that's kind of cool. I've never dug one of those before, so... I have one of those now. A um, little piece of glazed pottery that I found in the hole with something else. So I always keep those pieces. You guys know that. Let's see here. That Hickok belt buckle, which is super, super cool. I actually really like that, even though I normally aim to find <laughs> older stuff. Um, but as I've always said, you don't get to choose what you dig. So that was pretty fun. I like that. And last but not least, the star of the show. Here is that powder flask, put back together as best as I can. And naturally, you can see it's sitting on a paper towel, so I haven't actually totally um, put this back together yet, but I put the places back, or put the pieces back where they should be. 
You can see there's a hunter right there. And he's surrounded by, I guess, woods? I don't know. Bushes, whatever. I imagine you probably have a dog right there, and I'm missing that piece. That stinks. And then a little piece right there, and obviously the entire other half of it. But um, where I found it, the uh, which I didn't film, the property owner came out and said, oh yeah, there was a burn pit right here. So, you know, the soil was turned over a lot and uh, just mixed all around. So not much you can do about that, but I really am happy to have that. And um, I will figure out how to put this back together and certainly display it. So, all right, that wraps it up. Well, I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. And I think based on a recent Facebook post I made this week, details of which I won't go into, but some of you did see it. I think I'm gonna change my closing tagline because it seems like every YouTube digger has one, right? So I think we'll end with get out there, save what you can, do what you love. We'll see you next week.